Hey, welcome to my penny diary, folks. This is week 10, is it? Oh man, I've lost track now. But yeah, uh, so if you're not familiar, this is I go through a, week, a weekly video where everything I've painted that week for myself or for commissions and uh, then show it off to you guys. Just kind of see what you think. And then, of course, uh, I can look back on these videos and see how much stuff I've painted over the year. So we're kicking it off this week with Blood Rage. So this is the Ice Giant or Ice Troll. I think it's a giant uh, from Blood Rage, the board game. This is one of the lo last figures I have to do for the first wave. Um, I kind of went with a different idea here. Um, I didn't want to just paint it blue, you know, like an icy blue color. Uh, I wanted to, because the, the, the rest of the models that I've painted are all really skin colored, skin tone color, sort of Caucasian skin tone. Um, and I didn't want this one to stand out so much from the other giants and trolls and stuff. So I've given him a more of a, I don't know if you can tell from the, the paint job, but it's got like a blue hue to his faded color scheme. Um, I thought it was an interesting idea. Uh, I was playing with it. I, and as you can tell, I've, I've kept the theme of the basing the same, so it's not got snow all over the bases. So he's come down from the mountains into the, the foresty area to join the fray for fighting for supremacy or whatever the case may be. So yeah, pretty decent model. Uh, it was interesting to paint. Uh, like I said before, the uh, models for Blood Rage, the monster models are really good. I mean, they're, they're really interesting. These are... Fit, fit nicely into any miniature war, miniature army, that sort of thing. So they work really well. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so yeah, that's the first model for this week. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so these are from the Song of Ice and Fire board game. Uh, the Starks, which I've been painting for the Kaiser. And uh, these are obviously the Banner Bearers and the Captains for the basic infantry guys. So... You got two of the same dudes with banners, two of the same captains, which allows you to make two squads of um, storm sworn swords, I believe. Um, so yeah, uh, I suppose there's nothing really much I could say. Uh, the models are nice, came out nice. The the um, flags, the banners are already mold molded with the 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 wolf sigil on, so it was just a question of painting them. And uh, I I guess, I know you can't tell from the video, but uh, I try to make them just slightly, very subtly different. Like this one's got more of a sort of a leathery purple hue to it, whereas this one is more of a blacky gray hue to it. These two are identical other than in terms of the, the leathers and stuff are slightly different. I've also added a slightly more gold trim to their helmets and shields just to make them stand out a bit as captains. So I can actually show you what they look like as a squad, so hang on a second. So you can see I've added some of the basic troopers to the to the unit, so you can see kind of what how they're blending together, if you like. I don't know. Um, they're, all the basic storm, sworn swords are done now. And I don't know how many is that. It's like 24 basic dudes or something, and the two banners, two captains. And that is the core of the starter box for uh, the stocks done i'm gonna, now going to start moving on to the characters and some of the cavalry and then there's still the unit of berserkers as well um but you can see it they come together quite nicely um the color scheme is probably a little muted maybe uh, i've kept them very similar to what they look like in the box i might have made the cloaks a little lighter you know because the cloaks could have been say grayer um but, I don't know, the grey and the metal. Although, you could have made them a blue-grey, I guess. But anyway, uh, i gone with the whiter cloaks. Um, just because of the northern look, I suppose. But, there you go. So, that's another few models knocked off that task. On to the next bit. Alright, these little fellas. These are for me. So, um, I've been seeing a lot of undead armies come along for, say, Oathmark and all these sort of things. And it got me really wanting to do an undead army. 
I've always wanted I've always wanted to do undead armies. I've done undead armies before. Uh, I'm a big fan of the the look and feel of an undead army. It's just it's cool. And I've got a ton of stuff up in the loft that I can do for regular size undead stuff. But the undead army that I went for is a halfling undead army. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Anyway, so these are the first couple of bits I've started with. So I've got together um, so a unit of spearmen. As, as usual, I've built them up into line rampant, or dragon rampant rather, uh, squads. You've got 12, a unit of 12 spears, a unit of 6 cavalry. And then as I use them in other, you know, rule sets, I will then um, add or subtract models depending on what I need. If that makes sense. So... The first 12 spearmen are just sword or shield and sword spear standing at attention. Uh, I do have some other, I have another unit with different poses, but I wanted, I just went for the, the sort of at the ready pose sort of like. It's got a command group, you've got a standard bearer, a cool looking drummer. Uh, it sort of reminds me of, a, I don't know, like a, a sort of from Mardi Gras, New Orleans sort of uh, dude. I don't know why. Maybe the top hat. I don't know. Uh, and then, of course, the leader. The leader actually broke off his um, foot. So you can see over there, on the, he's got a little crack in his in his heel. Uh, so he broke off there a couple of times. But he came out all right. So, unit of skeleton spearmen and a unit of cavalry. So, I've still got a couple of bits and pieces to do. I want to put some emblems on the shields and on the banners for both units. Um, but for the most part, it's done. Um, I went for a little bit of a sort of a, a wraith look on the cavalry, if you like. They got these tiny little ponies, which I thought were quite cute. Um, that's why I couldn't resist. The little pony riders were hilarious. Uh, and also, I've got the shield maiden force, you know, the sort of Viking shield maiden force. And it got me thinking, you know, like I wanted a force to fight to fight with them. I could have gone down the what the usual route of the what I call the sort of Moorland halflings, which is just the box standard halflings that you see in most uh, games. Uh, but I obviously when TT Combat brought these models out, I had a look at them. I painted some of them obviously for their website, and then I was like, wow, when they come out, I got to get some. Unfortunately, their resin stuff is not on sale at the moment. So I have to wait until they, the COVID stuff ends and all that so that I can pick up a few more bits. But at the moment, I do have the unit of cavalry, the unit of infantry, and then I've got a unit of ranged archers and another unit of spearmen and a couple of characters. That's what I've got so far as my core. Um, but these are the first two units I did. And to be honest, undead armies don't take long to paint. Uh, I've obviously gone for a little bit of a green color. Uh, sort of, I don't know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, I wanted to go for a, like a, a, a old weathered look to them, but at the same time, they got the, you know, the green on the, on the cloaks here, and they got the green on the banners, but the banners are quite deep and dull, and then I'll add a, like a skeleton white color sort of to the banners, just to make them pop a bit more, uh, and even the bases are, you know, like, dark and dingy so to represent the undead and the and the the dread that they bring with them if you like i was i had quite fun painting these actually uh, i started in i think it was on the monday or the tuesday i thought you know what i'll paint up a skeleton just the one uh just for fun just to you know a little icebreaker or a palette cleanser if you like and I enjoyed it so much, I ended up paint, getting the rest of the unit together. I painted them, and then I brought out the cavalry, and I just went down, you know, Daniel from there, and started putting more figures together. And now I've got a core of a force together. And I think it'd be quite fun to have them face against my shield maiden, my sort of Viking shield maiden units. And then now I want to do the other halfling factions that they do, the, the Persian halflings. When those come available, I'm definitely going to pick up some of that. And then, of course, I might as well do the basic normal halflings that everyone does as well, like the, you know, the halflings of the moot. Anyway, that's my beginnings of my undead halfling army. Hopefully soon you'll get to see some of the characters and some of the other units I'll be adding. Now I've got one more thing. Alright, so, 
uh, talk about halflings. Uh, these are obviously the halflings I started painting last week. I did 10 last week and I did the last 10 this week. I can't remember which 10 I showed you last week. So I just put out the whole unit here and know that I've only painted half of this unit this week. The other half was done last week. But we've also added the um, final details to the model itself. So we've got the little white cross on there. Um, why we went with the white cross, <laughs> I don't really know, to be honest. I think, basically, this is one of the units I'm going to be painting for this, this week coming up. You notice on his chest, he's got the little cross there. This is a squire from the range. And um, they're going to be painted, a little sneak peek, um, like this, with the sort of the red little scale across the top there and the blue clothes. Uh, so this is still work in progress, obviously. But I kind of figured, you know what? Um, the Bretonians always had a, like a sort of a French flair to them, if you like. Uh, so that's one of the reasons I went with the blue and red color scheme. And then because they had those Christian sort of looking crosses on their ch on their chests, and these are monks, I decided to go with the crosses on their shields. And it just makes the shields pop a little bit more as well and ties them in together sort of as a religious unit or a, a fanatical unit or a whatever unit. I don't know. So the problem is when it's not your um, sort of theme, if you like, you just kind of just making it up on the fly. So, yeah. So there's a unit of 10 or 20 halfling monks. Um I think one of the things I'm uh, not disappointed, I mean, I think that they look fine and they look nice, uh, is that even though I went with, and you, it probably even looks worse on the camera as well, even though I try to make the, the browns very different. So, for example, you got this guy who's got like a sort of a mustardy brown um, cloak. And then you got this guy who's got more of a sort of a, a, a way, faded brown. And then, for example, this one has got a more of a darker brown. But when they're all together as a unit, um, it kind of just blends together, really. And it doesn't look all that different, you know, as opposed to if I'd, say, done some white and some black and some yellow, if you like. They would have looked a lot more brighter, uh, but they look a lot more muted like this. Um, I don't know. I'm, you guys can tell me what you guys think. I, I still think they look fine. It's just... I'm slightly disappointed that they didn't come out quite the way I expected it to do in my head. Um, but nonetheless, I quite like the model. I actually quite like the models. Even though these are just 3D prints um, for the Kickstarter, I'm quite impressed with the range so far. I mean, the Squires are some of my favourites so far. Uh, I did, obviously, the Longwoman a couple of weeks ago. These are the, the, the monks, and then the squires are up next. Uh, that's all I've seen by a couple of the characters. And they look great. I mean, they're really decent sculpts, and they come out nicely. Uh, nice big fat cheeks, and got some nice interesting details on the models and stuff. So, I quite like them. And uh, when these, these are coming to the Kickstarter soon, I might have a look at that Kickstarter, because... I was talking about, you know, in the previous clip of this video when I was talking about the undead and I was going to do more halfling factions, the Bretonian halfling faction would be quite cool to add to that. Sort of a chivalric knight faction in the world of halfling wars. Anyway, that is all I've painted this week. That's quite a lot. I mean, I've got 10 halflings there. I've got the 12 from the spears plus the 6 cavalry. Uh, the one ice giant and the four um, Song of Ice and Fire miniatures makes up quite a number of miniatures this week. I've obviously got more coming next week. As I was saying a couple of weeks ago, I did all my prep work then. So I've got a whole stash of miniatures that I've been working on. And some of some bits and pieces. I've got a little chicken coop that I'm working on. With some chickens and some more Jaws of the Lion miniatures. I'm also still working on my Crusaders. And more commission stuff <laughs> anyway that's it this is actually quite a long video compared to the previous videos i've done on these tape painting diaries but i had quite a lot of miniatures done this week so yeah 
Thanks for watching, guys, and hopefully I'll be back with some more interesting content soon. See you guys later.